Hello and welcome to another video on Z scripting for ZBrush and we're gonna carry on with the previous video uh, working on our nudge access plugin I had a viewer ask if it would be possible to do something similar also for the positioning and the zoom of the canvas so I went ahead and created this we have some more controls and here we have a pixel amount so if I have say positive 50 I'll move positive 50 on the X and the Y and if I say negative 50 I'll leave negatively on the X and the Y we also have this percentage so 0% brings my model all the way up to the left 100% all the way up to the left to the right 50% smack down in the middle and the same for the Y right there and we also have zoom so we can zoom out or zoom in by the set amount so if I want to really zoom in really fast you can say thousand and boom 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 keep zooming up there if I get to zero I get here zoom is zero I can't even see what's going on so I can just do this stuff let's get started coding all of these controls okay so before starting anything I'm just gonna make a copy of our old one and I'm gonna rename this to version 1.0 and this will be the new version so let's call this version 1.1 and give it a new date and let's get started in down here I added some development stuff I have a routine that it's called every time the plugin is loaded and it gives you a little note that lasts for half a second saying loaded now I couldn't do this I couldn't leave my note here and this is because notes are sublevel only in the script you have sublevel and you have top level when you have something that is called sublevel, it means that it can't be just dropped anywhere here. It needs to be either inside a button, a slider, a switch, or inside the routine. So I had to create this routine, then call it right away, and this will make a note appear every time the plugin is loaded, every time every f all the code is re uh, read. The reason why I did this is because we had a little bug in our plugin and I'll show you how to fix it later on also added a button down here so that I can close it because from now on I'm just gonna work on our plugin as a plugin in the plugin palette instead of going to the Z script palette okay so let's load this I'm just gonna grab this back here and load this version load it there we go and there it is so the reason I have that loaded script that loaded routine down there is the following for example I come down I come here to this nudge amount slider and I say 45 degrees for example I start rotating at 45 degrees that's nice but then if I run a sc another script and I have this insert cube which is something I have in my macros just inserts a cube so it's a script it's a macro so if I insert that cube and then I come here and I say keep spinning on the Y you see that it loaded the plugin again and it didn't read nudge amount because I didn't set nudge amount I just pressed Y so I will need a memory variable to save nudge amount and right now that slider nudge amount sets this variable to whatever the slider is so I will need a memory variable to register that and save it so that if another script runs it will still be the same nudge amount okay so I know I'm gonna need more than one memory variable so I'm gonna have I'm gonna do a if statement and check if the plugin has been initialized and then set my memory variables so I can say MPNA so mat pony nudge axis underscore so remember that memory variables are like supers like constants and super globals 
which means that they can interfere with one another if there's another one with the same name. I can't just call it init because other plugins might be using that name. So I'm going to use init as my memory variable name, but I'm also going to use the initials of my plugin and an underscore and M to say that this is a memory variable and I'm going to say init. So I'm asking here is if this memory block exists and actually if it doesn't exist because that's when I want actually want to do something so I'm going to use the not operator saying if this doesn't exist then create the memory variables I want and obviously the first one I want to create is this one make it exist so I'll do mvar def the name of the variable it will only have one placement and I'm gonna set it to one well I could set it to zero I just need to make it exist next time that comes around this code inside here won't run anymore because it already it doesn't it already exists now another another thing that I want to do is now down here to my development section I want to create a button that will delete my memory variables in case I need to delete them so that I don't have to restart ZBrush every time I'm debugging stuff. So, so far we only have one variable here and I'll say mem delete that variable if I need to delete it. Okay, so I know that this is my first load and I'm thinking maybe instead of using mvar get down there because I'm gonna need to use this variable down there. Uh, well, maybe not. I can just do an else statement and say following loads and so far I know I need to register this so I'll do a mvar there for that oops and I'll call it nudge amount and if you want to make sure you can use this I don't think it's going to be necessary so I'll set my mem nudge amount to zero if it's the first load just as that and on the following loads, I want to set this nudge amount. So, var set this nudge amount to be whatever that memory variable is. So, I'll get that variable in here. So, I'll say m var get, and I'll grab that. And it's going to be zero because it's zero based. And I'm saying it only has one position to access that one position. I'll call zero, which is the first position in that memory variable. So nudge amount was zero. On the following loads, it becomes whatever this memory variable. Now all I need to do is every time I change nudge amount, I need to set this memory variable to that value. So I change that down here so all I have to do is m var set the name of our memory variable the position which I want to use which is the first position zero and then I can do nudge amount or I could also do I get zero and just grab whatever that was now when I come back here I close my plugin reload load it let me just delete this cube, open this up, now we have the delete, delete mem variables, and I'm going to change this to 45, and I'll start rotating on the Y, I'll insert the cube, and I come back here to Y, load it, and it keeps working as 45 degrees. Okay, so that's fixed. Now we got to start looking at how we're going to introduce the positioning and the scale. So that means that we have to change some names and perhaps place this inside a sub palette. Now we're going to add positioning and zoom. And for zoom, I believe we only need one slider and perhaps two buttons for zooming in and out. So perhaps two sliders, one slider to say how, how much are we going to zoom by and that will influence the buttons. So if I press a plus, to zoom in it will zoom by that slider amount and the other slider is just to zoom in and out so that slider 
to set the amount of zoom we're going to zoom by with the buttons we'll need a memory variable and positioning is just going to be the same controls we have here so we also need a memory variable for nudging the position so because we're not going to have those that many controls we can just create some separators instead of placing them inside of sub palettes okay so we have this nudge amount and we know that now from now on you're gonna need nudge amount rotation and nudge amount positioning as well so I'm just gonna select all of them and I'm gonna call this ROT for rotation rotation nudge amount um, might as well grab this memory variable and change his name accordingly rotation nudge amount and I'm gonna create the other two variables so I'll just copy this and paste so the first one will deal with positioning the second one with zoom I'll do the same down here positioning zoom here positioning zoom and here okay let's start by creating a separator I'll just grab one of these buttons here delete that I don't need that I'm going to disable this button say this is gonna say rotation settings and I'll call it rotation let's see how that looks Close that, reload, oh, okay, ah, this is memory variable, okay, let's get back to the script, and what happened is that I'm trying to get a memory variable that does not exist, so I'll just comment this out, because it's going to the following loads right now, and if I reload, load it, let me delete memvars and close this and that deleted the previous memory valuable that we had now I'll bring these back and I want to add these memory variables down there as well so I'll just grab these guys copy I'll grab this this and this and paste that there okay so if I save and go back to it reload load it right okay rotation there's our separator but I forgot to say to change his width here we go so the width of one please and now I get back to it close reload okay so there's our separator I can fix his width and I'll just trial in here and add some more dashes until it looks good okay so there we have our separator and I just added some more dashes and I came here and added some height to make it bigger than the usual buttons so that it's a bit different so we can't have the same names otherwise uh, the other buttons won't show up so what we can do here for nudge amount we can call it rotation amount and then positioning amount and then zoom amount for the other ones set x rotation and then set x position and here we'll say x rot or x rotation uh, depending I don't think rotation will fit inside this button so we'll just call it x rot y rot z rot okay so all we have to do now and obviously we need to change some things to make our uh, routines work but we'll do that next so we have rotation now if I copy and paste all of this and say positioning so, and I'll change these names now save that come back here close reload okay 
So we have our rotation tab and our positioning tab, which doesn't work yet because we have to make some changes. Might as well now do the um, zoom tab. So the zoom tab will have two buttons and two sliders. So two buttons and grab these two sliders down here. And we'll change these in a minute as well. So let's call this zoom. I won't need as many that. Oh, actually, I'll need more dashes. Zoom settings. So the first button will be a plus, and then the second button a minus, or main minus, and then plus. So one will be minus to decrease, the other one plus to increase, and I'll just change this width here to 50% on each one. And let's move on to the sliders. The first one is actually a percentage one. So I'll grab this slider here, which is more similar. I'll paste it there. Change this to zoom amount. Okay. And this last one will just be called zoom. Yeah, we worry about the values later on. Now let's just see how it looks right now. So close, reload. Okay, so we have our plus and our minus, the amount that we're gonna nudge by, and the zoom. Okay, I'll change these dashes here so it makes it more to make it prettier, and we can start changing our routines and all that. Okay. So let's start with these sliders here where we have these variables. In positioning, we know that rot is going to be replaced with POS for positioning. And in zoom, we know it's going to be replaced by zoom. Next up, we have to change these routines. So we know that set axis at three different calls, three different types. So we're gonna carry on from there, all well, these four, these five, and these six. And set sliders as three as well. So we're gonna call these four, these five, these six, that's for positioning. Now zoom, we finish set axis at six. We're gonna say zoom is gonna be seven, and eight, these two zoom buttons. And finally, we got set sliders for the zoom. And this guy is gonna be number seven. Now we know that set axis is dependent on set sliders. We first need to set the slider in order to set the axis. So we have to start with these routine set sliders and make that work first. We know that this code is specific for our rotation. So what we can do is place it inside uh, an if statement, asking if it's type one, two, or three, uh, we're gonna run this code. So I'll say if, and I'll just grab this, if type equals one, I'll place this inside the brackets and say, or, and I'll just copy this, or type equals two, or if type equals three, we'll run this code here. Okay, that part sorted. And I'll just call this rotation. And now I'll do the same for positioning. Okay, so we can grab this variable and place it there. And we know that this positioning, we have X, Y, and Z positions. So looking at the type, X, Y, and Z types. So if the type is four and I want zero because it's X position, I will need to subtract four from type. So I choose four type. 4 minus 4 is 0, 5 minus 4 is 1, and that gives me the y, and 6 minus 4 is 2, and that gives me the z. 
we can also grab this code here place it down there so we can have some feedback on the note bar and we know that X for positioning is 0 and Y is 1 and Z is 2 so before I even set it I'm just gonna comment that out and remember we're working with these three sliders here and for at the moment we have minus 180 to 180 so we're gonna check first what values do we get there as we change the position and see what what values we get and what and how can we approach this so coming back here I'll close my plugin and reload it and this is the three sliders we were on about so they're not going to do anything I just want to see what I have there let me just snap this to the center okay X three seven four Y two nine one and Z is zero okay let's nudge this to I'm just gonna focus on the X for now so 257 on the X if I move it over there 79 on the X if I move it right on that about the edge of Z brush I get minus 83 if I just make it disappear by right there I get 10 oh not that slider and minus 7 okay so that looks like X0 is around here and if I move it here what do I get 619 755 okay let's create some buttons and see if these values are related to the canvas width because let me see document because right now my document width is 777 and my height is 601 right so if I grab this and I place it there 706 I make it just disappear 770 my document width is 777 hmm and my document height is 601 let's check out the height place it there and see what's the height there minus 33 so 31 and if I come down here approximately okay so this looks like is referring to the document what happens if I change my document zoom for example and make it tiny and to see the size size of the document I'll just do this and okay let's make it bring it down there minus 253 minus 95 6 okay it seems like it's the center of my scene as you can for the X that's Y4 Okay, so if I bring the center over there. Yeah. Okay, still minus. What about the center of my tool? Okay, seems like it's relative to the document size and maybe to the center of my tool. Let me see where is the center of my scene? And if I come to draw and I come down here and I'm snapping here so let me place these into zero and that will snap my grids I'll just show all my grids here so my grids are snapped to the center right now and what happens if I move my tool I want to check that out as well Oops, I got symmetry on. Let me press X to turn that off. 
I don't need to press Alt there. Okay, move that there. Okay, so it seems like it's relative to the center of my scene. Let's make sure of that. Okay, 360. If I place my scene right there at the top corner, I almost get a zero. Okay. And if I place it there and I move this, I get 770 and 594. If I look at my document, 777 and almost 600, 594. Okay, so it's relative to the document size and to the center of my scene. I like to call it scene. Let's place this home now. So knowing this, we can now start coding that. And how do I get this document width and document height? If I press control, button path is document width and document height. Okay, I'll need those values. So I've set two variables with one with the document width and one with the document height. So for the slider values, we can give the user a percentage. Let's get to position, and here are our sliders. We can give a percentage. So if the user says 50% on the X, it will be smack on center of the document. So our values will go from 0 to 100%. Now, it's easier to work with the 0 to 1 value when we're doing things like this. So any number, I'm just gonna do it here. For example, 100 times 0.1 or 0.10 will give me 10% of 100. And to simplify this, let's say if my canvas width was 1000 and I say times 0.50, I get 50% of a thousand, which is smack on middle, which would be 500. So I know that my value from the slider is going to be 1 to 100. If I multiply 100 by 0 0.01, I get 1. And if I multiply, for example, 50 coming from the slider by 0 0.01, I'll get... 0.5 so knowing this I'll grab this and I'll multiply that 0 to 100 value by 0 0.01 to get a 0 to 1 value that I can then use to multiply my document width or my document height by that amount so let's uncomment that because we're gonna need it and now I'm gonna say down here, var set and x, we know it's the zero. And looking at this right now, I probably will change this because this is not the same thing as rotation. We needed that for rotation, but not for this. And I'll just say input value, or actually, to be more accurate, just slider value. I'll grab that and I set my X positioning to be the document width times my slider value. So if, for example, I say 50 on my slider, that this will make it 0.5. So if I say 50 on my slider, slider value will be 0.5. And let's say that the dock width is 1000 okay if I say 50 on my slider I get 0.5 so this will multiply by 0.5 which is half and this will give me 500 pixels and for the Y exactly the almost the same thing move this here I know that the Y is 1 and I want to do this to the document height 
And to be honest, Z type is always going to be zero because Z refers to the depth. And the depth, we're going to control with zoom. So we don't actually need that. Which means we can get rid of that slider, the six slider that controls the X, which is number six, which means set axis down here for the zoom will be six and this one will be seven. We're not working with set axis. What am I doing? Five, six. Okay, we're working with slider X, Z position. Okay, let's remove Z position and go to set sliders. And this will make this slider number six. And I'll just remove type six from here. And we'll just have the X and the Y slider down. And might as well remove this Z from here. Okay, so we set. Uh, let's see how this works and if we can improve it if it doesn't work really good. Okay, so let's close this. And now we should have two sliders instead of three. One for the X position and one for the Y position. Okay, let's try it out. Let's put it around 50%. That's not good. Okay. Okay, I think I... Ch why? It's not moving enough. So I think I know what's up with that. We got 70... If I go all the way up here. 77 and 60. And the document size is 777 and 600. So if I come back here and reduce the amount here Let's see if that works okay and that's it so perhaps we should start at 50 get these two started at 50 and indicate that this is a percentage so coming back here instead of starting at 1 uh, at 0 Start at 50 and I'll remove set and replace it with a percentage symbol. And that will give me, I close this and reload. Now you have a little percentage. When I over the slider, you see 50% exposition. Now that looks good. Now let's take care of these guys. Well, um, actually, let's get the zoom out of the way first because we're still in set sliders. And let me see zoom amount, zoom. Yeah, this is the last set slider in this six zoom. Okay, let's take care of this guy. Okay, so if type equals six, we are in the zoom. So to zoom, zoom in and out using transform, we're going to need this X, Y, and Z zoom. And uh, scale, actually. This is the X, Y, Z scale. So we're going to set them, the three, at, with just one command. Otherwise, there will be a distortion on the X, Y, and Z. So first, let's see what kind of values we have when we change the zoom. And I'm going to say just zoom here and remove that and they're all going to be the same when I set them so I'm just going to grab the first one which is number three and I'll just worry about the zoom X there so if I go back to ZBrush and I close reload okay zoom what's the zoom right now 212 okay what if I make it really small? I check the zoom again. 74. Smaller. 32. Okay, what's this then? 265. What's this? 700. Okay, let's look at our grid there. 
700. What is this relative to? So I can't really find what it's relative to. I can make it really tiny. That will give me 18 and I guess one is just going to be a little dot in this in there and I can keep if I keep zooming and zooming and zooming. It's just that number keeps increasing and increasing and increasing. So the zoom slider to set the zoom, it's a no, no. So we can forget about that. What we will do is use the zoom amount. And it's not going to be percentage, it's just going to be a zoom amount that will determine for how much we're going to be zooming in or out using these buttons. So let's get rid of the slider then. Okay, so back into my code, I don't need type 6 because it's not going to exist. And where is it? Set slider, slider 6. I don't need that. Okay. What we will need for the zoom is the slider right here. And I'm going to allow, allow the user to go from 1. And let's set the zoom of 100 and see how that works. From 1 to, let's say, 1,000 and see if that works well. And then we'll move on to that. And these, this is not a percentage, so I'll just leave it as zoom amount. And now let's start working on our set axis and this guy right here. So we know that we'll be working in pixels. So I'm just gonna say pixels, the amount of pixels to nudge by. And I'll start with, I'll start with 50 pixels and make it one, two, 500 pixels. And now let's get back to our set axis routine and like before I know that this code is for rotation so I'll just do an if statement here make this code only run if type is 1 2 or 3 and then I'm gonna work out the position and remember that positioning we only worried about the X and the Y and so the X transform is 0 the Y is 1 which means that the set X is 6 which is for the Z button does not need to exist and where's the other set axis okay these are the set axis 7 and 8 so they become 6 and 7 so we got the 4 and 5 and then the 6 and the 7 for zooming and for zooming we have decrease and increase and that's gonna work out the uh, these three guys here. We know we're gonna need a note bar for this, so let's work out our note bar. And I believe that uh, for the scale, the scale is gonna be the same for the three, for the X, Y, and Z, but I wanna make sure. So I'm gonna check out the zooming and make sure that they are always the same number. So the zooming is on the plus and minus symbol there. And you now if I just press that in our plugin, just close that reload minus so 181 181 yeah it's always the same okay so let's start with positioning and for positioning we know that we're gonna need this variable this nudge amount and let me just change something about this slider because this is gonna move in pixels so we could just say get rid of that and say pixel amount this determines the amount of pixels to nudge by okay and I might need of course I need to move on the positive or the negative so so it would make sense to start at zero and perhaps 500 pixels is too much so let's see how it works with minus 100 pixels to plus 100 pixels and we'll stay we'll stick to that for now so we're going to grab this variable here. And I believe uh, when we did the, the previous video, I was a bit foolish because I asked if our variable was positive or negative and then try to add or subtract. 
But if you add a, posit a negative number to a positive number, it's just going to subtract, right? So what we can do is we'll use var add to add. And we're going to add to this variable here. Oh, let's grab the whole variable. We're going to add to it our nudge amount. And we'll do the same down here for this one. And let's see how that works. Okay, so I'll close this. Reload. Okay, let's check that out. That's our X and Y pause. Pixel amount is zero right now. Let's make it 50 on the positive and move on the X. Okay, let's make it minus 50. So we're going to move on the negative. Yeah, and that works. Let's try our Y pause. Minus goes up and positive goes down. Now let's, I'm just going to make these buttons fit here. So if I go back here and go to my buttons, the X in the Y position, uh, where are they? Here they are. So I made 50%. And that's that sorted. Now we got to check out Zoom. How are we going to make Zoom happen? So this should be pretty straightforward. We just grab our variable here, I'll copy that. We don't need a note with everything. We just need one of them. So zoom and I'll just grab number three there. Get rid of all that. If we are decreasing, I'll just grab that very, all those three variables, right? I'll just paste that there for now for reference for now. And I'm going to need these three variables, which are the scale variables. So this guy, this guy, and this guy. I'll copy that. Come down here. I'll paste that. Okay, so in this case would be a subtraction because we are decreasing. So var subtract on this and decrease by that nudge amount and now if I just grab that copy and paste it there and in this case I would add so the amount is a hundred and nothing happens but if I change this this is because I set the slider for that value and I probably have the same problem in the other values. Uh, where are we? Zoom, zoom nudge amount. I've set, I made it so that when you move the slider, you set the nudge amount, but I didn't determine how much the nudge amount would start off as. So it's going to be a hundred. So I'll just grab nudge amount and go right up here where I set it. So I'll say 100 for my nudge amount. So the first load on my nudge amount is going to be 100. And rotation amount, I believe, is 0, right? Here we got, yeah, we start off as 0. But positioning amount, yeah, and positioning amount is 0 as well. Okay, so I don't, I don't have to worry about positioning amount, just rotation amount. And I'll set it to 100. That's fine. So we go back to our plugin. And I'm going to delete these mem vars to make sure everything is working. I'll close that. Reload. Come back here. The nudge amount is 100, so I'm zooming by 100. Let's make it bigger. Boom. Okay. Let's make it smaller. And I think maybe a thousand is too much to go to. I mean, if you go by a thousand, hmm, maybe not. Okay, one thing I just noticed here if you go by a minus value, the object flips. All right, okay. So we want to make it so that we don't go by a minus value here. So a easy way we can do this is saying if, and remember they're all the same. 
so I can just grab one of them so if this guy is smaller than zero that means it's a negative value if this guy is smaller than zero then I'm going to set it to zero or I could use the math function max which finds the greater of two values and it works like this if I say max and then I place my two values in here and one of the values is whatever we got from there whatever it's been set and the other value is zero which makes us not need that if statement anymore so basically what I'm saying is find the biggest number between these two numbers here so if this is a negative number zero is bigger than this number and it gives me zero okay let's check it out and start making it smaller okay zoom is zero it doesn't go below zero okay okay another thing that I just noticed is that my memory variable was set to a thousand but my slider is on a hundred how do we fix that let's check it out so before I even do that I want to check if the same thing happens when I place a script in there okay so it's 500 I'm moving by let's make it yeah I'm moving by 500 there let's run a script let's use our insert cube here I'll just delete it I've run the script now and if I now increase load it goes back to a thousand because that's what the memory variable had set before hmm I think my code is right here let's see what's happening let's first let's delete these memvars close the plugin reload the plugin okay zoom amount is now 100 we're moving by 100 that's right if I set it to 500 press enter I'm moving by 500 if I run a script then move it load it still moving by 500 okay so this is because I didn't deleted my variables I believe let's go to a hundred here yeah I'm moving by a hundred if I insert a script and I come back still moving by a hundred yeah that's correct that's working that's why this delete memoirs is good to have to make sure everything is working now let's check out the rest of the plugin and see if we have any more problems when we run another script hmm okay I just noticed that my view is stretched out as you can see this is supposed to be a cube <laughs> it's not a cube right now so we got some problem here uh, with the zoom remember that zoom is not actually zoom is scale and I believe we scaled it on the X but not anywhere else okay it's still not a cube what's wrong in our uh, and of course I created this only for the X so I need to create it for the other three as well so X Y and Z and that should do it so I'll just delete my memvars here I close my plugin and I'll reload that project demo animated head okay and now I'll reload my plugin and now we should be okay so 100 moves by 100 if I go to 0 and I come back that's fine and I change this to 200 for example and I'm moving by 200 there I can see that zoom right there okay and if I insert the cube load it okay still moving by 200 fine great that's working so I believe I don't have to worry about this sliders here if we insert another cube because they set the value they don't set a variable but this guy sets a variable so let's see if I move by 20 pixels and I do X position yeah it's moving by 20 pixels and if I insert a cube in other words run another script 
load it still moving by 20 pixels that's correct and minus okay so now we can get rid of these do these two development buttons going back to our code they're down here somewhere here they are and get rid of rid of that I'll just comment that out leave it there for you guys save this and if I go to my folder that that's the guy right there I'll get rid of that and see if I can create that again by let's delete these memoirs and close and then when I reload this is how the plugin is gonna look like and let's see if it created my ZSC file it did not so I'll have to restart ZBrush and load the plugin again so here I am restarted it and let's load it again okay this is the one and actually I'm gonna go on and rename this to version no not yet I wanted to keep that name so I'll just load it as is come down here there he is okay and if I go to my folder there we go this is the new version and now yes now I can rename it and say version 1.1 and this is version 1.1 so all I have to do now is grab this I'll press ctrl C for copying go into my Z startup my Z plugin 64 and I'll place I'll paste it here and now after restarting ZBrush here we have our Nudge Axis plugin and we can let's go 45 rotate this guy like that that's beautiful we can set the rotation and the XY position let's do 50 pixels set the position percentage and the zoom whoa that's a big zoom what happened there that's a huge zoom okay so what the heck happened there let's go 50 zoom here oh, we're not finished okay now something happened it started off with a crazy zoom nudge amount even though I'm saying the zoom nudge amount is a hundred I'm setting that to a hundred here in my variable okay so I went back into the code and changed something and now it works when you first load up ZBrush not a problem and what I did change was up here when I okay when I define it this zoom nudge amount I define it as a hundred before as you remember and uh, defining a memory variable it doesn't like that so I define it and then I set it to be the nudge amount which is set up here and that worked so plugin is finished all set and ready to go I'll share these with you guys let me go back to okay so you'll get this so we get the code for version 1.0 and 1.1 and the ZSC file is just version 1.1 now so you just drag this inside your zplug64 folder and you got the plugin for yourself and you got the code to examine and that's it guys in fact I will change the structure a little bit okay my pony nudgexus and what I'll do is I'll create two folders one with version 1.0 and another folder read version 1.1 and I'll change these names okay this is 1.0 I'll place it there and now I'm gonna share this version is 1.1 with you guys so I'll place this in the download 
grab these two guys and place it inside of there and I'll share this folder with you on the download so the link is the same one and I'll leave it in the description below I hope you enjoyed this video and this has helped you out doing your coding and I'll see you in the next video